Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and those of none specification. Today I'm bringing you a quick tutorial on how I like to pre shade and highlight my miniatures so that you can create fantastic works such as this Undead Revenant here using only contrast and speed paints. Uh, but the process is a little bit more technical than one might be expecting, but you'd be surprised to know that this fellow was not highlighted anyway after putting on contrast. I do all the work beforehand, so I just have to schlack the paint on and get to work. So we've got our miniature here, and I have gone ahead and done a base coat and zenithal highlight of this model, which really, really, with these kinds of paints, takes the work out of it. So. What you need to do this would be to use a black primer. I like to use Vallejo surface primer for airbrushing. And then for my Zenithal highlight, I like to use Vallejo surface primer skeleton bone. These work straight out of the bottle into an airbrush with no additional additives. Now, what you'll need to pre-shade and pre-highlight is Citadel layer paints, white scar or storm host silver. These work fantastically. Alternatively, if you want to use something that's a bit more affordable, I advise White Matte and Shining Silver from Army Painter. Next up, you'll need some brushes. I like to use the Army Painter Regiment brush. This is a workhorse that I swear by. And for dry brushing, you could use the Army Painter Dry Brush which is a fine brush for its purposes, but I prefer to use just a cheap, soft bristle makeup brush as it works quick and gets the job done real easy. Alternatively, if you like to use Citadel brushes for dry brushing, you could quite literally use Citadel's dry brush, shown here. It's a great workhorse of a brush. Alternatively to the regiment brush, should you like to use it, the base brush from Citadel is a fine brush for its purposes. So let's get our workstation ready then. Alright, now that we've got our workstation ready, we're going to get started with the base layer of white for the dry brushing. We load up our soft bristle makeup brush with a bit of white paint, tap it into a paper towel and brush it out to get it to that tri-pigment consistency. And then simply just gently brush the model with the pigment. As uh, Bob Ross would say, two hairs and some air. We're really not trying to lay it on thick here. You're just brushing away at the surface model and letting the bristles catch what is on the top layer. This may seem counterintuitive to more seasoned players as it kind of overrides some of the work done by the Zenithal Highlight, but trust me, Zenithal Highlighting works best for creating dark shadows on your models. By doing a pre-highlight via this method, you'll create a fantastic looking finished miniature once you've applied all of these steps. And next we're going to move on to our pre-highlighting with the metallic color using our Stormhost Silver and our Army Painter Regiment brush. Get the brush a little wet, preload some pigment, and just brush on that metallic over this handgun. You can also alternatively paint any other metal details that would be on the model normally, such as buckles, armor, or any other surface that you would want painted or metallic. Alright, let's see that again. So we've got our base painted model here from the airbrush. We're going to load the makeup brush with a bit of white paint here. Got to load it up via the paper towel here. Brush it out, tap it out, 
and then just gently go over the model with the loaded makeup brush. This dry brush technique will pick up all the raised areas in a nice uniform shade. I find that with most models, shading the faces, which can get caught heavily in a zenithal highlight technique, really helps bring out detail and sells a better looking model in the end. Trust me, this sort of pre-highlight with the more stark zenithal darkened highlight over the area will just overall look better. Now let's see that metal highlighting technique again. You load up your brush of choice, such as the regiment brush with your silver pigment, and paint over any metal details. In this case, I'm just painting the gun and his belt buckles so that painting over with contrast will create some very unique looking metallic effects that can really sell a well-worn, rusted, corroded, blued, or just overall weathered looking metallic as opposed to something painted in just the base metallic. And so here you can see this pre-highlighted model in his, all his glory. By using the X techniques, you can achieve such looking models like this. I find that all you have to do with these models is just slap on your choice of speed paint, contrast paint, or whatever sort of quick style painting pigments such as washes or stains and you'll end up with just some fantastic looking models ready for tabletop gaming and trust me this process is quick fun to do and overall just get you gaming faster out there at your local tournaments it's not going to win you any painting awards but as many people say in this hobby, a fully painted army is better than a non-painted army. Well, I hope you enjoyed this one, ladies and gentlemen. As always, I've been Foolery, and I'll see you in the next video. A most heartfelt thank you to my patrons and subscribers. I wouldn't be able to do this without y'all. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment down below. I have a Patreon. It's in the description of the video. You can also find my Twitter and my Discord server there if you would like to join the community and help this channel grow. I hope you enjoyed this story, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks again, everyone.